Hello, everybody. I am Brian BJ Swick33. Along with me is Mark Wingman709 and Rob, also known as Presar. We are what this up, Xbox up? Life, and this is episode 378 Xbox on Nintendo. I gotta say that like with a question mark. So, uh, welcome back, guys. Another week in the books. Games to be played, fun to be had. We had uh, our first FNL in a long time. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but before we get to all that, uh, we're going to go through, do some normal stuff like what we've been playing. And uh, we have a list of topics. I started out with two, and it looks like Mark came through and had a splash on. I th started with three, maybe. You yeah, had three. A, yeah, you had to add an extra four just to make it even. <laughs> <laughs> to one up you even though the third one that you had was actually my uh from an email i sent you earlier yep. in the week so yep very true so <laughs> should be a good show uh it's good stuff so let's get started so what have we been playing guys who wants to go first i'll go first so uh i've been a very light 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 week for me uh work ruled all unfortunately but I did, uh, finally, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do it, but I did. I bought Rocket League. Yes. And yes, we, we talked right. about it briefly, I think last week, you know, are you going to get it? I don't know. So in a moment of weakness and peer pressure, I, uh, I picked it up and uh, I actually played uh, with my son. Mm. Uh, we played split screen and uh, it, it was, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was a good time. It really reminded me of a lot of the games from back in the day that I used to, I used to play on the PC, which were you know something similar like this. You know, either like you had a field where you had your guys running around shooting each other, or you know some kind of ball game like this. Uh, it's it's definitely entertaining. Um, definitely good for people of all ages, <laughs> young and old alike. And yeah. it worked surprisingly well, split screen. Were you going to say something? Oh, no. Yep. No? Oh, I thought you wanted to say something. But uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, it's not the type of game that I think I would, like, search out for. Like, uh, it's not one that I think will, like, keep me coming back. But whenever I do play it, I think I'll enjoy it, which is kind of a weird situation. But... Uh, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to what uh, I think what Back to the Future add-on pack is out now and what Batman's coming out. Yes, ba the Batmobile's yeah. coming soon and the DeLorean is already, is already in. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm taking a pass on the DeLorean, but I think I actually will pony up for the, for the Batmobile. Yeah. Just because. So uh, that's about it for me. Next. I'll go, I guess. Um, I also played Rocket League. Um, and, uh, Braun, I know you mentioned on Friday Night Life that this might be the game that you 1K uh, in a long time. Uh -huh. Did you did you complete your 1K of this game? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I still have one achievement. I think it's, like, drive 50 kilometers or something like that. <laughs> but... I actually went because I saw like people were having trouble getting that thing to pop because it's like if you go to your tires, it'll show you how many that you've driven on all the tires. Uh -huh. And I'm I'm game? I'm at like sixty four. So I'm not sure. And some people's like, oh, it pops anytime between fifty and eighty five or or sixty and eighty five or something like that. So I just gotta keep playing until it pops, I guess so. But um that's the only well, one I have left. I can give you a surefire way to pop that one. Oh, okay, how's that? <laughs> it's uh, depending on what you're. Uh, okay, so here's what you do if um, because I I was noticing that when I was driving around, I actually had that one up, and it was like the progress bar was not moving at all. Right. Even though I'm driving, I even put it a. I went into like a no bot exhibition mm -hmm. just to drive in circles and see if that thing would move, and it wasn't moving. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. As much as I played, I would have thought I would have had this beat this one done by now. 
So what I found out is what you can do is you can launch an exhibition, uh, and just put no bots, mm -hmm. go in, start driving, and you'll see that that as soon as you start driving, it'll give you 2% on that meter. And then you actually have to basically crash to the dashboard, you know, quit out, exit, you know, don't, don't exit the game normally, but, you know, hit, bring your dashboard up and hit the menu button to quit the game, relaunch the game, do another exhibition. As soon as you start driving, you'll see another 2% added and you get the idea. You keep doing that until it what? triggers it. Yeah. Then it'll trigger it. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so you got to do that so, 50 times. No, oh, wait, I was, no. I was go like 50 at, miles, 25 I was at times. 70, I had to do it like 14 times. Oh, I had to do that and sit there because uh, same thing. I'm like, I've gone way past the 50 kilometers and the progress bar wasn't moving at all when I was in game for some reason. Mm. And I found that as a solution. And I tried it. And it worked. Every time you start driving it, add 2% to your progress bar and you quit out, but you can't, you can't exit the game to the, in the menu and then relaunch. It doesn't work. You actually have to crash out, essentially, to the dashboard, relaunch the game, and then it does it every single time. It gives you 2%. So. Right. I'm at 84% I'm at right now, so I'd have to do it you yeah, know, eight, what, eight uh, times. About eight times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd take, you, it'd take you a few minutes, but at least it'll be something that will... Um, if it if it annoys you having that last one, but I did one K to game today, yeah. and that was the thing. That was the last thing, and I was like, "Oh come on, you know." Yeah. And I'm like, "Why? I'm over this." Yeah, same thing. I had that well within, you know, way past the 50k, and it didn't kick off. So I'm like, "Let me try this," and it worked. So, but I did one K to game today, uh, it, it, and I think I and I have actually unlocked everything in the game. <laughs> I've played so many matches. Mm -hmm. Um, nothing unlocks anymore. I have like, everything available, but dude, this game is so cool. The, the unlocks and stuff and the, the, the way that I love the truck, I forgot what it's called. It's like the, um, Oh, I don't know, but it's the pickup truck. Yeah. But, uh, that thing is, I, that's my favorite. That's the one I use. And I got it decked out with the little, the beanie cap with the propeller on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I've got the fizzy flag. So I got the little yeah. Fizco. Uh, and then my boost is the the, the sunset, sunset overdrive. overdrive? Yeah, oh. it's sunset overdrive. And I've got the sunset overdrive boost. Um, and I got the cog uh, Gears of War tires. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's cool that like and i love being in the lobby and like looking at everybody else's creations yeah. and the cars that they make um and rob you were talking about how this game reminds you of some games of old yeah. i thought i had the same thought earlier it's like this game reminds me of a game that i used to play on the amiga um 500 and i cannot remember the name of the game but and I'm sure I'm sure it was very different. It was I know it was nothing similar, but it was still um, it was still something on the on the old Amiga. And it was this and it was this game group of like like these brothers or or something. It was very popular. They made a lot of games on the Amiga. I can't remember them. I, I can't remember their name, but I've been trying to look it up. But it was uh, the game was just so much fun, and it, that's what this reminds me of. It was one of those the matches are quick and they're fun, and every you know even when you lose, it's just like there's still those moments that are just like so much fun and and interesting. It's and it, and when you pull off that that the uh, that move where you get a a really cool goal, that is just so satisfying in this game. Yeah. So it's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So like my I use the Grog car, and I got the uh, was it Pixel shades, so the little black Pixel sunglasses, with and then my flag is the uh, companion cube from Portal. <laughs> so and I think I use like the green ion, um, boost thing for mine. So yeah, so many things like I still unlock stuff like. I think the only stuff that I can really unlock now are just, like, the flags. Um, uh, last week, somebody mentioned about the community flag to see if we could get our community flag on there, and I said I would look it up. Um, I don't... They are not taking... There's nothing where we could submit a flag. 
Um, and it doesn't look like they're going to unlock like the ability to create your own flag just because that opens up the possibility to bad stuff because everybody's got to ruin something, you know, so thanks internet. But um, I will look a little bit deeper because I was in the forums. I may like tweet out to them or whatever. Um, but we'll, we'll see. So, and Carbide, uh, uh, Mark, Carbide is talking about Twitch on Xbox One if you're in Canada. So that uh, well, that's Canada. He doesn't. He doesn't count. Right. So and uh, do you know the title of our show is his Xbox Life? By the way, on Twitch. Oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> you cut out the T. Yeah. That's the uh, copy and paste there. So, all right. Nice that's, job. That's been updated. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, his, so the okay. fix car for carbide just moved down to the states. Yeah, <laughs> can you just pack, pack everybody up, move them on down. So, but uh, cool. So, what else? What else do you play, Mark? You mentioned Rocket League. Oh, uh, also Just Cause Three. I actually completed the storyline. Um, did all my collectibles, and uh, it kind of stinks that the game's over. It was a long game. I've got lots and lots of hours in that game yeah. uh and it's it's fun i really i had a hard time today i was like i want to play something else and you know but i i love the the grappling hook and the parachute and the wingsuit and flying around and the helicopters and and just there's so much fun with the the explosions and that game is just pure fun it's just like oh i'm ready i need something new like that it's just I wish we had more games like that. So, but yeah, I did uh, finish up Just Cause 3. So I'm pretty much, I got some backlog stuff, but I don't think I'm going to get to it. Um, I'm just, I'm just ready, dude. I, I, I One more week uh, for the division, and I just don't know if I can wait another week. No. Well, you'll have to. Yeah. So, and what really stinks is I'm going to be on the road. It's like no. Oh man. So, but I, I think I'm taking my box with me. I, I think it's because it's the division. I think I'm gonna have to take my <laughs> box with me. <laughs> nice. So. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I'm very excited about that. So, uh, I know. I know the first. So here's here's how this usually works for me. It's like a big game comes out. It just kind of like how you're traveling, Mark. The same thing happens to me. It's like, you know, I'm going to come home on Tuesday. I'm going to eat dinner. And I'm going to get yelled at by my wife because I'm going to sit down at the game and play a game all night. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, it's opening night. But then there'll be like server issues. And then Wednesday, I'll be Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be super or Wednesday, I'll be super busy. Thursday, I'll be so tired. I just want to go to bed when I get home. Friday will be F and L, which we'll get to play. And then Saturday, I'm gone pretty much all day because uh, we have a lot of bought furniture and stuff like that. So we got to move furniture to other places and, and do a whole bunch of stuff on Saturday. So who knows if I'll even be on. So that's usually how <laughs> the first week of big game releases works for me. <laughs> so Yeah, see, that's one thing. I, I don't know if I want to take my Xbox with me. I mean, the thing is a brick, dude. It's huge. Plus the power brick. And then I got to take my external drive with me. And it, it's just... I don't know. I'll be home the following day, so it's like I don't know if it's worth it. And then if it does have, if they do have issues and the game isn't even, then it's like I'm hauling it for no reason right. at all. But I don't know. I'm not expecting issues with this game. As many betas as they've put out, I mean, they've done so much. It's almost like you can't use it as an excuse. There's no excuse really, other than like. Especially <laughs> Especially with the record-breaking uh, people, the amount of people that tried the beta. Right. Which is what I encourage people. See, that happened because of me. Yes. I just want to state for the record, because everybody's like, oh, I've played it. I want to burn out. I was like, no, no, go play it. Hammer it. Let them know. You know, this is a chance for everybody to get on. Everybody needs to do it. And they set a breaking record. That's So you can all thank me when this game works on day one. Thanks. So I'm You're welcome. Thank you now. Thank, thank you. <laughs> early, early thanks. <laughs> Here, wait, wait. Yeah, <laughs> reach reach cross country, pat you on the back. I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm patting you on the back right now, 
on Skype. A little lower, Bron. Oh, a little there to you, the right. Better. There, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, all right. So that's what I played this week. Okay. By the um, way, since you're ignoring my my little message there, I, I cannot I think open you're it. Of it... Speedball. Oh, Speedball. Okay. Speedball and Amiga from the Bitmap Brothers. Bitmap Brothers. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna look that up right now. Uh, that might be it. Were you Bitmap chat? Brothers is definitely the group, the guys I was thinking of. Are you typing chat in Skype or chat in yeah. Twitch? Use Twitch Skype. chat. I can't look. I can't look at Skype chat because <laughs> it'll mess up the video. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, while you're looking it up, for what I played, I played Rocket League. Obviously, a ton of it. Um, we already talked about. I want to. I'm almost going to 1K. It. It looks like I have to do something goofy because their achievement won't pop. Um, and uh, I think I'm a level. I just I hit level 20 as well, so I'm at least pro level. And I'm a prospect elite level on ranked matches, so that that's I've played a lot of that. So um, the other game is that I played today, just you know, just to play a little bit, play a little Battlefield Four. Um, it's been about a week, you know, last week or whatever since I played uh, first round in. Yeah, I just destroyed, destroyed in the first match that I played. <laughs> I was just like, well, looks like I didn't lose anything over the week. Kind of stretch out my hands there. But, uh, yeah, so played a little Battlefield 4. That's about all I played. I was going to pop in Dying Light. I have never played Dying Light. Um, I see people playing it again, and, and it looks like they really saw the DLC and stuff. Uh, even though I don't have the DLC, I just, I've never really played it. So, uh, but yeah. So that's what I played. And that leads us to round table, our news and topic time. Um, before I get there, you know, if you'd like to support the show, we have multiple ways. One's twitchalerts.com slash donate slash this Xbox life. Those are for tips. And we also have patreon.com slash this Xbox life. Uh, two ways to to help out the show if you want. Um, we had uh, when we did FNL, we streamed it, and we had a couple people pop in while we were streaming our community event, and uh, they, uh, you know, a couple people's like, "Hey, I listened to the show. You know, you guys should do more on Twitch." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, we we do Twitch every Sunday, so uh, just as a reminder, every Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern." Uh, we are live on Twitch, so the show you're hearing in MP3 format um, is basically our exact recording of what we do live. So, and I had somebody ask us, I we had issues last week because Mark got kicked off and everything. I think that's kind of put a hold or a little bit of delay on the MP3 release, as well as Mark, or uh, Rob was very busy at work this week. Um, somebody actually asked me on Thursday, they're like, I still don't have the show on MP3. I'm like, it should be coming. It should be coming. Priorities, <laughs> Rob. Get your priorities straight. So, um, podcast first, hey. work second. <laughs> it comes out super fast as long as you guys don't crash. <laughs> uh, it was definitely not intended. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very true. So I, I told him I was like, you know, I was like, yeah, we had a a crashing issue and this and that, and when that happens, everything gets delayed. So, um. But we typically record on Sundays and MP3 releases on Mondays as long as everything's golden. So, And this week is a week for it to be to be golden. And better. Oh, was, nice job. Nice job. Jinx. Oh, thanks. I was going to say, do you guys hear that? <laughs> but, That's uh, smoke. <laughs> there is like a machine running in my house. So hopefully you guys don't hear it. Um, I do. Oh, I hear do you when you talk. Oh, okay. Uh, well, see, the jinx nice. came in immediately. Yep. Look let's, at you. Let's hit the hit the topics real quick. Um, I'll let you go through this real fast. I'm gonna go find out what that noise is. <laughs> All right. And it stopped. Okay. It must be over with. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I can take it then. Uh, the first don't, thing. Don't mess with the jinx, man. Yeah. Don't tempt it. Uh, the first <laughs> thing I had was just a quick thing. I, I mean, Xbox has like the early release type of things or the game preview type of thing like steam early access early access games um 
the Solace Project, uh, that's how I'm going to say it, hopefully I'm saying it correct, uh, is now available on Xbox uh, Xbox One if you want to check it out. So for anybody who tries out, I think Ark, wasn't Ark an early, early access game? A lot of people went out and tried. Uh, Elite Dangerous was on early access, so the Solace Project is out there now. So that was it for that. Um, the next one is I wanted to go through and see if you guys have read, heard, I've looked, I can't find anything. There's an Xbox event. Somebody somebody even mentioned it, uh, I think wrote a question in last week or whatever, or asked about it at some point in time, um, about what we thought the Xbox Live event was going to be on the 25th. And really, I was like, there's an Xbox event on the 25th? <laughs> um, basically, they held one. It was for media only. And there's an embargo until the first of March. So is that tomorrow? No, Tuesday. They've had, they already had the event, and then the embargo is right. up tomorrow. So we're recording tonight, so we're gonna miss that for tomorrow. Every, obviously, everybody will see it on uh, the various news sites. But I wanted to see what you guys thought it might be. Like it'll be Tuesday. This is a leap year, yeah, so Tuesday. tomorrow yeah. still February. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's my father-in-law's birthday tomorrow. He'll be 14, I think. He's 17, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, I, yeah, I think he's 14. <laughs> Something I think, like that. Uh, actually, we're going to... Maybe we'll lump uh, item number six in with this because I believe it's item number six okay. uh, on our list of topics, and that's the HoloLens pre-orders. Um, HoloLens pre-orders are supposed to happen... Uh, I think it was... It's either... The end of this, it's either tomorrow or maybe the first that they start, and they're going to ship the HoloLens out within 30 days. It's My guess kits, is that's right? – well, they're dev kits, yes. Hmm. Um, they start shipping tomorrow, or pre-orders start tomorrow. Okay, so this is – the pre-orders start on the 29th, and they're going to ship in 30 days. So within 30 days, you can get the dev – HoloLens dev devices. So that – that to me seems like what it was. I can't see it being when we heard about the event. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I'm like this can't be anything like Xbox related, or or really because um, there were what three months from E3 or you know, right. and they wouldn't do like a closed door and then like it just didn't make any sense. This makes more sense because it's not a consumer product; it's a developer product. Um, and they probably were discussing, you know, whatever it could be what was here about the that it's going to launch, the price of it, when you know when it's going to be available, the games that are going to be shipped with it, that type of thing. That's what I think that that event was, mm -hmm. um, and they'll probably announce it tomorrow or the next day. Um, did, did you see how pre-orders start to, um, tomorrow on the 29th. Did, did you see how much the developer edition cost is? Just a little bit of three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. That that's yeah. why that's why to me, HoloLens, like people I, I, I don't know why people like think that HoloLens is going to be built for gaming or built for the Xbox. No. Not even close. No way is that going to happen. And in my mind is is it going to happen? Because there's no way they're going to be able to get a three thousand dollar dev kit down to two ninety nine for a, for a, the purchase of the device. This so. isn't the problem, I guess, if you would even call it that, with this versus something like the Oculus, in that Oculus needs a super expensive computer to run, but isn't Hololens pretty much standalone? Isn't that the difference and why it's it, probably so expensive? Well, it's it's standalone, yes, and it's also AR, not VR. So, right, I mean, yeah. there's a huge difference in it. There will be games on it. Don't get me wrong, and like they showed the stuff with like um, Minecraft and stuff like that. I just, yeah, it's crazy. It, it's maybe maybe that's what it is. Mark, now that you mention it, it's like I really had no guess on what this event was for because I just thought it was weird timing. Um, yeah. The only thing I could think of it being is something like they've bought something. 
They've, well, they've purchased they, they bought, AMD. They've done. They've no, done well, something big. Microsoft also bought. Was it Zamarian? Zamarin. Um, yeah. Zamarin, Zamarin or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. that that's not like a secret. But that happened this past week, or that was announced. Mm. Um, there's also that's with mobile, though, right? That's with mobile. So yeah, yeah you're supposedly, and I, I think they're they're going to be able to port like iOS and Android apps over to Windows 10 like really easily. So with this new technology. So what Xamarin Xamarin does, for what I've seen, is it's a part of something that you put in like for Visual Studio. And it's kind of yes. one of those code once compile to multiple devices yes, uh, using right. C sharp and stuff like that. So we're, we're excited about it at work because we all have MSDN licenses. And we're hoping that this gets wrapped into our MSDN license because Xamarin for the dev tools per year is a thousand dollars a developer. So it's uh it's pretty expensive, but it's really cool, you know, tools and stuff like that. But you know, so well, Xamarin, and the only other thing I think of is like Windows 10. Uh, if they were going to talk anything, Xbox would be more like the Windows 10 apps being more available or usable on Xbox One or the release of DX12. I don't know. I was just trying to think of multiple well, things. Like there's that. another story I read somewhere, and I, I think it was a bunch of garbage, but... There was a quote rumor. I'm going to call it a rumor because I can't. I only saw it like one place, and I, I unfortunately, I thought I had saved the article, and it looks like I didn't. So I don't know where I read this, but there was. I read something about Microsoft allowing like Xbox games to be playable on Steam, and I'm like, that just makes no sense. I mean, that, that just, I'm like, no way. Yeah. Both systems are kind of like, you know, Xbox is so closed off. You know, that there's no way that that just didn't make sense. So I really kind of shrugged that off as a bunch of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm like, well, maybe that could be it. But again, something like that to me is uh, an E3 announcement. If if they did something like that, it wouldn't be like, we're going to talk about it on March 1st. That makes no sense. It's just, you know, so I, I really think this was all the, the HoloLens. And that it makes sense now that we see the article saying they're going – uh, tomorrow, pre-orders are going to be available. So I think this news article probably brought, busted the media blackout that they had, or the, they broke their NDA. And so, my, you know, the only thing I was kind of maybe thinking was like, hey, it's all Xbox One games are cross, cross buy, cross play, or cross buy, cross save with PC now. <laughs> Something cool like that I'd be for, but uh, yeah. So, I'm thinking it's probably not going to be HoloLens. Okay. And that, I only say that because the HoloLens really doesn't do a whole lot with the Xbox right now. It's more PC, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, it, was I, it an thought, Xbox event, though? Do we know it was I, an Xbox event? I heard somewhere, and I don't remember if it was on Major Nelson's podcast, or maybe he was, as I watch his Periscope videos occasionally, and I could have sworn I heard on there from him, he was talking something about it, like from his hotel room, he was mentioning like what was going on, and I could have sworn it was like Windows 10 and Xbox. So I would not be surprised if it had something to do with like cross play, something where the two systems are going to share things. Because if Major Nelson's involved, it's definitely Xbox related because he's like the Xbox guy. Right. Well, and, but no, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I found something that I, is fitting in right with what you're saying. So I wouldn't think it would any, be anything hardware related. It's I'm guessing it's some kind of tie in between the two systems. Maybe the stores are going to be merged. You can cross by in between them or some kind of gaming that you can do between the systems. I mean, they announced the quantum leap uh, mix where you can you know, buy one, get the other. Yeah, quantum, I said quantum <laughs> leap. Yeah, I meant quantum break. 
uh, so quantum break, you know, where you can save in between one another and go back and forth to some degree. I, I bet it's maybe something along those lines, just because of how it might be Windows 10 and Xbox in this thing. Yeah. And who did you guys, I think Mark, you said there was some, uh, some of the media got invited. Do you remember who, who went? No, I don't know. I know IGN and stuff was there from the podcast so I was listening okay, to. Okay, so it's so. definitely gaming related. I mean, it could be well, a I'm, gaming part of it. I mean, it doesn't have to yeah. be like strictly gaming, but, you know. And I'm I'm reading a thing here. I'm looking at NeoGAF, and there's okay. a, an article here, Microsoft to hold Xbox and Windows 10 media event February 25th. The update... Um, the update that they got with some information on how the event's going to play out. So there's, it was an open house format from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Stay and play all day or drop in and out as your schedule allows. Phil Spencer will open the event with a welcome address, uh, hands-on with new content from Quantum Break, Forza Motorsport 6, Gears of War Ultimate Edition for Windows 10, Minecraft, Killer Instinct Season 3, Ori in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, Below, Pit People, Dark Souls 3, Tom Clancy's A Division, and more. Developer talks and platform exper experiences offered every 30 minutes. Developers and Microsoft Studio spokespeople available for interview. Direct gameplay capture permitted for several experiences, recording equipment provided, and video assets and art provided. So, but I, that, that, I, I still don't think there's going to be anything in this. I, I can't imagine... I mean, why would they release a bunch of stuff prior to E3 and in, in, in March? Yeah, know? I don't I don't see that. I don't see them holding a big event and saying, hey, we're going to embargo you for like five days. Be, you know, to, to talk about the uh, games that we've already known about that you right. played with. There's it seems weird, they, but of course, you know, maybe yeah. they don't have something new. I, I don't know. That's that's why. You know, we're kind of yeah. we're all speculating here. So I would think it would be, I would not be surprised if Phil Spencer dropped something at the beginning of that. But it's probably not huge. It's not major. Something major they'll say for E3 because that's when they want the buzz. Crackdown three, something. June one, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we know the multiplayer beta is yeah. in June, so or this summer. Mm -hmm. Dude, I can't. Crackdown can't get here quick enough, but. Um, I, I, or, or maybe it'll be a new Wolfenstein title. Well, we know oh. the Universal Windows apps are coming to the platform, right. so I mean, yeah, maybe they're going right. to announce that. Maybe they're yeah. going to, maybe the yeah. Universal apps are going to hit before E3, and that's you know, what maybe I was they're, thinking. Maybe they're just, it might just be something like, hey, here's a uh, stuff you already know, but we're going to show you some new things, or we're going to show you some apps. Maybe Universal apps will hit uh, in the the March dashboard update or something. You know, uh, maybe they're coming that quick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, it just doesn't make sense that it was kind of like a quiet private thing that no one could talk about until March 1st. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. If it's, you know, Microsoft, you know, to me, if they're going to do something, they're going to have video there. It's going to be streamed live on Xbox. And, you know, I, I don't, it just doesn't make sense to have this hush hush thing about it. Like, Hey, we're gonna do something. Don't tell anybody about it, at least for three days. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. Yep. All right. I guess we'll find out in a couple of days. So we'll talk about it next week. But make a we'll mental note to put that as a topic for uh, next week to talk about whatever in the world they did. See how far off we are. <laughs> we're in La La Land, and all it is is for them to come and play games <laughs> so but uh all right mark do you want to do the next one since it was from your email oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> so i the, again i and i don't this is uh i would put this down in the rumor okay. side yep um battlefield 5 is reportedly Set in World War One, according to uh, a, a a retailer. Um, let's see, it's a German retailer 
that announced it on Twitter. Supposedly, it's going to be a World War One game. Um, it also says the game's going to be releasing October 26. So I think we kind of figured out a new Battlefield was going to come out this year. That's not yep. a really big shock. But if if this truly is a World War One game, I mean, my thought was like, really? I mean, World War One. I don't know. I'm like, do you think that people will like that? So mainly, I, I you know, and I emailed you, Bron. I had to email you right away, and I'm yep. and you, we haven't talked about it. We're nope. saving it for today. So here's my question, Bron, because you're a huge Battlefield fan. I yes. know you love this franchise. Are you excited to play Battlefield in a World War One setting? Uh, no. Nope, absolutely not. So, I mean. I loved World War II. Um, you know, it was it was fun. Um, Vietnam was even better. Um, but I don't think going back to World War One would be any good. Um, not saying that I wouldn't buy it, because um, I have to own every Battlefield game there is, but uh, just knowing for people who aren't into history and, and, and follow up on, like, war history and stuff. World War One was trench warfare, a um, lot of charging and, and just horrible conditions. And, you know, that's when people started gassing each other. Um, and I'm trying to think of some of the things that were actually invented during World War One. I. I mean, you have some of the earliest, the like the first time tanks really showed up. But they yeah, were you- huge... And slow, and, I mean, they were just death traps, and uh, people were, like, mapping out places in the f- over the fields using hot air balloons. They were dropping bombs from hot air balloons. Um, planes just started coming out. Um, they were using carrier pigeons, for crying out loud. <laughs> so, instead of radios, it's just... It'd be crazy to think about that, and then... You know, most of the guns are going to be single fire, single shot um, weapons. So I don't, and, I don't know biplanes. what's don't that. Forget your biplanes. Yeah, the you know the but yeah the biplane. But I wouldn't say that maybe there wouldn't be a World War One mode or a World War Two mode or a Vietnam. <laughs> mode i really think it would be cool if battlefield 5 would be the combination of all of the battlefields so you would have a one two vietnam um and then you'd have your modern uh warfare and then the what real big piece of what uh battlefield 5 would be would be like another 2142 but it would be called 2143 um because you know the 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 Vietnam thing sold. I mean, did very well with with Bad Company. Like when they brought out that expansion, that Vietnam expansion was awesome. I loved it. So that's what I would really like to see out of Battlefield. I would like to see like the history of Battlefield. And uh, when I heard you say this, all I could think of is like the whole game can't be World War One. It has to be like maybe that is a mode. And then I started thinking like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if it's just like. The master, you know, the Master Chief collection. You go and you select which game that you want to play, and it's just like, oh, do you want to play, you know, Battlefield World War One, Two, Vietnam, and then Modern, and then Future? I think it'd be that would be really cool. So, what would you think about that? Would that would that be better? Because I don't think World War One itself is going to do well. I I don't I just don't think yeah I wouldn't think World War One would be I don't know. <laughs> I would. I have no desire. I actually have no desire to buy a uh, Battlefield Five. Period. Um, I did enjoy. What was it? Battlefield twenty five fifty two or something like that. What was that futuristic? Twenty one forty two. Twenty one forty two. Yep. Yeah. That that I liked. I thought that game was a lot of fun. I loved the mode of you know getting to the other side and then jet whatever it was. Yeah, Titan mode. Yeah, yep. getting up and on their titans and trying to destroy them, and that was just fun, man. That that game was really good, I thought. 
So I think it might be interesting if they did something like that where, yeah, you maybe you started the campaign and you played as a soldier in World War One, and then an, uh, Act Two was, you know, so to speak, was World War Two, and then Modern, and then Future, kind of have four different eras. That I mean, you kind of get that in the Call of Duty, don't you? With Black Ops, they go through different time frames. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I, it's if they're only doing World War One, I, I think that's going to be a bit odd. Yeah, it's it would, uh, yeah. See, it's just if it's you like think going about backwards. It, I mean, isn't it? Well, you and, got and, all these cool technology and jets and helicopters, and all of a sudden it's gone. You're going to be in biplanes, hand dropping little grenades out, and you know it's just it to me it's like pew pew pew. You know, yeah. it's that's what you're going to go back to. Yep. And and that's exactly what I was thinking. But that's when I thought you know it would be cool because if you really think about it, the game's the same, it's just you're skinning it. And you're limiting the type of weapons. It's something that they could do. I mean, they could do that right now. Um, yeah. Which would, to me, would be really cool. I, I really think that would be, would be awesome. So. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. And uh, Rob, what do you think about that? <laughs> Rob has disappeared. <laughs> Rob is MIA. Yeah. <laughs> he got gassed. Um, all right. So moving on, um, we know that a Quantum Break is coming out in a couple weeks. Yep. And um, I actually got the Alan Wake American Nightmare uh, appeared. I got the – it came in my, my mail for pre-ordering it, so I already got the message. So I've already got that on my Xbox when I can go in and play the Alan Wake game. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, maybe I'll do that this week, as I'm waiting for Destiny. Destiny. But um, Destiny, I'm sorry. <laughs> gosh, it's been I can't out for years. I said that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate that game. The, the Division. division. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was funny. I was listening to a podcast this last week, and someone did the same thing. They said mm -hmm. the same thing. They called it Destiny, and they meant Division. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. I've done but, it a billion uh, times, so I I don't know um, division, anyways. So, but there's been a um, uh, there's a trademark in question for uh, called Alan Wake's Return, which was filed on February 23rd. Maybe this was talked about on the 25th. Mm. Um, so there's some question, and we know I remember seeing an interview with Sam Lake. Uh, from uh, Remedy, who talked about that when that, when they made Alan Wake originally, they did not plan that to be a single game. They had planned it to be to be more games to that franchise. So um, it looks like with Alan Wake's return, maybe we'll get a new Alan Wake game now that Quantum Break has gone gold and is going to be here. Maybe that's the next Remedy game. They'll go back and do an, uh, an Alan Wake sequel. Uh, so we don't know yet, but it's interesting, and there's been a lot of people that have been wanting this. A lot of people liked Alan Wake. I remember playing it, and I, I don't really remember th really enjoying it, to be honest, um, which is why I really didn't play this American Nightmare one, because I played the original campaign, and I I don't really recall liking it, but um, it was... I know a lot of people enjoyed it, so... Yeah, I, I really I liked... I really liked Alan Wake, so... Um, I haven't played the American Nightmare one. I might have to try that out maybe if I have time. But I only really have Is two weeks until my life goes away with, as Wing would say, destiny. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the division. Yes, the division. Destiny the division. can burn in heck where it belongs. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, so... Yeah, so we'll we'll keep you guys updated when we hear anything on Alan Wake. Um, and to answer Hawk's question, I've got American Nightmare is what is showing. I thought American Nightmare was the Alan Wake game with all the DLC that they attached to it. So if I'm incorrect, then maybe that is a, a, a new game. That should be... I thought American Nightmare was the second game. I didn't think they or it was DL it was DLC I, for the first game. I thought it was yeah, just DLC. All right, so I'm gonna have to look this up. I am too. <laughs> okay, because I want to make sure I get this correct. I thought it was just DLC. Here we go, Alan Wake, American Nightmare. So after 
After the events of Alan Wake, our hero finds himself in the middle of a new adventure in Arizona where his own words, again, hold the key to defeating his evil twin, the malevolent Mr. Scratch, who spreads darkness where he goes. Now more experience in dealing with the weird and horrific, Wake is determined to turn the tide. Um, I, I, okay, I don't know. Maybe it is a second game. Is it an expansion? It doesn't really s- state it. Um Fox says really... it was an XBLA game. Okay. It's a standalone, fast paced, pick up and play experience. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well then that's I'm gonna play that this week. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. I I'll really play. I really like the first one. So maybe I'll have to go back and play this one. The first one I did beat it was like, you know, one of the few games I beat. <laughs> um creeps me out sometimes though, man. Ugh. So <laughs> All right. Pin to home. There we go. So I'll give that. Yeah, it looks like it was a Xbox Live Arcade. But I would expect this next one to be a, a true sequel in the sense of what you would expect. So, all right. And what's next? Oh, yeah, next one. This is interesting. And so Xbox Live has been facing some outage issues recently. Yes, it has. And uh, I was just before our show, I was actually starting to listen to the latest podcast unlocked from IGN. Major Nelson was actually on it. Yep. And they actually outright asked him this. And then we, I, I, so I had to stop the show because we were on radar record. So I did not get to hear his response. Um, but I'm looking forward to hearing it. But if you, I would just, if you want to hear, you know, what the, the, the PR or Microsoft's answer to this is going to be listen to podcast unlock this week uh from their last show they had released last week they didn't really say to he couldn't really say much about it they're, they're not going to say much yeah. oh then it was it's just ddos attacks is is what it is they which say by who or anything like that so. well that's the thing too and i think i think we've talked about this rob i think you've mentioned before where these these hacking groups um they'll they'll talk about how you know and it's they're not Microsoft's not alone here. They've gone after Sony, and they claim that both these companies have really poor security, but all they're doing is a DDoS, so... Oh, you know, one form or another. Yeah, I mean... There's so many ways to do it. It's So, is that really bad um, security on their part? I, I mean, it, it's just like, if I've got 100 zombies pushing against my front door padlocked or not, it's probably eventually going to fall down. You put enough, you, you keep hammering enough at the door. You're going to break it. I mean, do you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, when they say, Oh, they want these companies to beef up their security and all this stuff, but then they, and then they act and the stories I've read are acting like they're these brilliant people hacking in and doing all this stuff when it's, no, they're not. They're just flooding the network yeah. with, which like anybody can do. Yeah. So that that I guess that's my question. I was curious what you guys thought. The is this another wannabe hacker group, or are these guys legit? I mean, do they really have the skill? And I'm not I'm not trying to insult them or say they're not. It's just we keep kind of hearing the same stuff from these different groups of people, but then everything that they're doing is like a, a denial of service. Yeah. I mean- so. It doesn't have anything to do with security or hacking at that. I mean, you're just you're flooding the system with requests, basically. If that's the form of DDoS that they're doing is, is flooding, you know, flooding the requests. But then it's just like, you know, why are you doing it? Because it's like, oh, we're going to teach Microsoft a lesson. It's like, no, you're not teaching Microsoft anything. Like... You're only the people that pay money to them. You're punishing them. So stop trying to say you're going after Microsoft. At least say we're going after everybody who plays on Xbox Live because that's essentially what you're doing. Um, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and then you know this article that we're looking here. It, they they say that um, hacker group threatens to completely destroy Xbox Live. It's like, why don't you go completely destroy PSN? Because we know it's all easier to take down than Xbox Live, but... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 
but well, you know, what, are, what is... are you doing? I mean, it's like you're not doing anything. You're not hurting Xbox when you do that. It's not like they're going to turn around and give us our money back. Yeah. Well, what I don't what I don't understand is it's it's like they said, well, it didn't even take as long as I thought to to do it, but they've been trying this since January. So essentially it took them 6 weeks to do a denial of service against them. So they've been at it for 6 weeks just to do a simple denial of service. I mean, my understanding, and I'm not a hacker, so maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but my understanding is it's not that hard to to to, to set up and do a denial of service against a service like this it, it shouldn't take six weeks to do i mean when you're trying to, to and, and it's like they're quote saying they're a hacker group I, to me a hacker is someone that gets in past the gateways past the security and they're inside able to do whatever they want renaming accounts resetting passwords deleting history and in grabbing credit card info and all that stuff. to me that's what a hacking hacker does not a denial of service. To right. me, that's completely something different. And then they, they took them six weeks to do a DOS. So I, I don't... And then it's like they're like, oh, we're so smart. We, it took us six weeks to do it. And I'm thinking, I think there's a 12-year-old out there that can probably do a Google search and, and have it done before the end of our show today. Yeah. You know, I'm well, like... It's so I, I that's why I'm kind of wondering. And then they're like... So then they go on and they say, we attacked Xbox to protest... Major companies like this have massive servers, but no real protection. We want Xbox to update the protection they have, which isn't much. Protection for what? How do what? you know if you're not getting in? All you're doing is shutting their services down. So right. what is it that they want? That's what all these guys are saying is, we're mad at them because they don't have enough security, so we're just going to flood them to shut them down. Well, you put too much juice behind anything, you know, you can knock out someone with any kind of electronic. I mean, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense. You're flooding a network. You're not. You're shutting it down, but you're not getting in. Yeah. So that, that's what I don't understand. So I'm curious. They, they're trying, to hear from you guys. They're just okay. So either they're just full of it, which is probably true, um, because if they're saying, "Oh, we want them to update," you're you're right. Update what protection? You didn't steal anything. You didn't get in anything. You knocked the core services and Netflix down for about three hours. Congratulations. It took you six weeks to cause four hours of issues, you know, total four hours of issues or something like that. Uh, the uh, the other thing is is with them saying, oh, and to be honest, we could, we could uh, knock Xbox off the face of the earth. You know what? <laughs> do it. Grow a pair and do it. Just don't run your mouth. You know, behind your little hacker well, group. I don't want them to do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> like your little hacker group. No, do it. Do it. Seriously, go for it. Well, I prove yeah, it. Pr yeah, stop they, talking, they, yeah. and just do it if you're going to do it. Because the thing is, is they can't, they won't, and if they do and they get caught, they're going to prison for a very, very long time. You know. Well, so is, it's just talk. What it's, what is it that they want? That's what I you know. These guys are just doing denial of services. It's like, why don't you actually state for real what yeah. you what your beef is? And, you know, not, oh, their security sucks. Well, guess what? You're not compromising their security. Right. Okay. So what what your actions are not proving anything. All it proves is you can do a Google search and, and learn how to do a DOS attack on somebody. Right. That's it. Okay. It doesn't you're not circumventing, you're not really hacking. Um, so, you know, yeah, there's, there's problems with every of these freaking companies in the world, but it's like, if these, and, and if these guys are real hackers, I wish they'd focus on something a lot more important. Like, you know, I, just, there's other things you can do. Go work for the FBI for crying out loud and, 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 and help, help protect our country from other nations that are hacking in and getting military secrets. There's, there's other ways to really Use your skills if you truly have them. Put them to good use. Do right. something honorable, not just taking down a video game network. It just it just seems idiotic to me. Yeah. Like really? And and the and the thing is, is like that... they're saying all this from their Twitter account, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> these guys pretty much equal the same person that plays me in you know plays somebody in Call of Duty, and when they get killed. Uh, the other guy comes and, and, you know, does the little motion, you know, the 
the up and down motion we all know about, um, does that and then it's like, oh, don't make me come to your house. I can beat you up. That That's what these guys are equivalent to, is the 12-year-old, sorry if you're really 12, I'm just using that as a number. <laughs> uh, nine-year-old, three-year-old, two-year-old, 14-year-old that's sitting in their basement playing Call of Duty and has got angry because their 25 kill streak got knocked off. And, you know, so they're just like, they go and they download the same DDoS, you know, software that's out there that anybody can download uh, and, uh, and and just did this and is all angry. And then it's like, oh, I can knock Facebook or I can knock uh, Xbox Live off the face of the earth. Well, go for it. Do it. Put run in your mouth and hiding behind the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, and if, if they do it, then fine. I'll come on here and be like, congratulations, you took Xbox Live off, you know. I hope they find you because when they do, you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, good topic. I Rob, love I love any, stuff any like thoughts? that. <laughs> it was Rob. Is... It's Rob, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Rob's like these hey, guys are bad mouthing me. <laughs> we we don't want to make any guys mad because then they'll go after our website and they can just sneeze on it and they'll go down <laughs> well, you please go for it <laughs> well, it's, it's, i'm not you know and that's the thing i'm not bringing it up to have their anger directed at us because who are we we're nobody you know it, it's just simply i don't get that these guys are and this isn't the only group you know and i'm not even mentioning their group i'm not going to give them the credit um, same with the previous groups. There's been multiple other groups that have done this type of thing, and they all have the same line. You, you know, it's like we're upset there's security, but all they do is a DOS. So, are you upset that someone can do a DOS and they're not protected against that? It's like say that, state that, because when you say you're a hacker and you're not hacking, then you don't even know what their internal security measures are. You know. And, and nothing's perfect. I work in this field. There, there's always stuff around. Uh, you, you, these the the companies that companies like Sony and Microsoft, the the vendors that they use that are in uh, my field. You know, we're always a few steps behind. We're try, We're always playing catch up. It's just the nature of the game. The criminals are always ahead of the game. It's just it doesn't matter which where you're at. Um, and the, a lot of these big companies are taking steps to try to prevent stuff, you know, but it's not, it's not as easy as going, Oh, put this box in here and, and, and PSN is completely covered or Xbox live is completely covered. It's not that simple, you know? And then when you get someone that's going to be like a child and go, well, they will get my way. I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. slam them with it. All that does is create more work that takes those technicians or people trying to improve or better than that. Now they got to stop everything they're doing and try to work out this other problem you just created. It just stops them from making progress on anything else. It, it doesn't gain anything. Yeah. So it's just like I mean, state I, what your real problem is and find a better way to take that to these companies or make people aware about it. But you don't have to take criminal action against them. That just makes you a criminal. And it, it doesn't – it makes you – it makes your complaints in it's like it's like you're invalidating yourself. Now you're just a criminal and no one cares. You're you're I can't get on my game and you're pissing me off. So now I don't care about what your cause is because I can't play my game. I'm mad at the I'm mad at the hacking group, quote hacking group, not Microsoft. And that's what I think these guys don't get. They're like, oh, we're gonna make everybody mad at Microsoft and they'll force them to do something. No, none of us are mad at Microsoft. Brun, are you mad? I was, you were impacted. I, I was a little, well, I tweeted and everything. I was a little angry until they, I, you know, I feel like they need to, they need to be more, if they're more upfront and transparent, I wouldn't have been angry at all. Cause I'd just been like, ugh, another, you know, white knight hero trying to prove a point that he's got a computer. He's got a laptop with a, you know, a hacker sticker on the front of it, <laughs> covering up his Apple symbol. You know, it's just like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just one of those guys, but no, like, you know, it took, it took them two weeks, you know, for them to come out and say like, this is what was happening. Like it shouldn't have, they, that's the only anger well, that I have at Microsoft is they're not transparent with the issues I, that they have. If it's just a server hiccup, Hey, we're having a server hiccup. Stuff like that is going to happen. 
No, I, I would disagree with you on that though, because I noticed it for one day. I only noticed it for one day. Um, one evening I couldn't play. And I heard it was I had read the article that they were having problems earlier that day. So I would take that they were maybe out uh, up to 24 hours. I don't know. My personal impact was one evening I couldn't play. Oh, well, I went and did something else. I was a little frustrated because I, I don't remember what I wanted to play. I think it was Rocket League I was trying to play. Uh, yeah, it was Rocket League. And I couldn't. And it was a little frustrating. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I didn't get mad at Microsoft because I knew what was going on. And, and they did state on their, you know, they got a status page and they talk about things are down. And, you know, they when it happens, when something happens, I, and I remember working for, I've worked for people like this. Rob <laughs> is currently dealing with this. <laughs> you know, you're in the middle of something. Bam, the world blows up. And here comes the boss. What's going on? Why is my email not working? Well, I just found out it went. I, it's down. Let me go investigate. I got no. Why is it down? Well, I've got to go and do some. Re I got to find out. No, you need to tell me. You know, it's like these people want answers right now, and I'm not saying that's you, Brun. Right. But that that's the way to quote the internet or you know the customers. Oh, why is Xbox Live down? This is Microsoft sucks. Blah blah blah. Well, let them figure out what's going on. It's not like oh. Something happens and boom, this message pops up. By the way, you're having a DOS attack from this IP, from these people, and here's how to correct it. Hit this button. Okay, oh, it's cleared. It's fixed. It's not the way it works. We don't, you know, there is no magic pixie server dust, you know. It, it doesn't exist, okay? And that's why I guess I get so frustrated at these people. It's like they're just being children. They're acting out like children. They don't. I don't think they get it. They they act like they do, but I don't think they really do get it. They don't see the big picture. And if they're people who like to game, why would you attack that? It just. I don't know, Rob. You were gonna say something a while ago, and then Brian just ranted. So <laughs> I need to shut up on this. No. Well, <laughs> go. You go first, Rob, and then I'll have my next thing. I'm yeah, gonna. I, I try to follow some of this stuff. Uh, you know, partly because it's interesting to me, and I also sort of should know some of it for work but a lot of the traditional like denial of service attacks that's really old school and and there's some guards against that stuff now and what they do nowadays a lot is they use botnets or mm -hmm. i've also heard like in the past that some of these places use routers like insecure uh, internet routers that people like Wi-Fi routers that people have in their house. They just load something on there and then they literally have thousands, if not tens of thousands of machines that just can spam a particular system, address or whatnot, uh, to the point of where they just flood it. Uh, I, I, Microsoft is a different beast compared to most places, but you'll have, let's say, like a co-location facility where a lot of places will have their equipment and companies' servers, again, not Microsoft because they're just massive, but you know they might have, let's say, like a 100 meg pipe coming into their servers over there. With a botnet, they could easily, easily overrun that just by the sheer amount of information that's coming through. And when you have, let's say, like, a hundred gig of data coming through on a hundred meg pipe. I mean, you're just flooded. There's nothing you can do. So when there is something like that, that happens, it not only involves the company to react, but you're also dealing with wherever they have their equipment and their ties to the internet. And, and there's so much to it that mitigating these things to taking care of these things it, it just requires so many people and it's sort of like the co-location facility might or the internet provider will say hey you know we've got this huge spike what can they do they can turn off the equipment or you know sometimes you can't block things because it, it's coming in as normal traffic so it it really is just ridiculous how these people think it's cool or think that it's okay to do something like this. 
because these companies initially, they can't react fast enough. And in the end, like we always say, like you said, Brian, like you said, Mark, in the end, it hurts the little guy. It hurts us. It hurts all of our listeners. It doesn't hurt Microsoft. Yeah, maybe some people get called in at the middle of the night, but you know they're doing their job to react to this stuff. They have security teams. They have internet teams. It's their job to do this. But they're not hurting Microsoft whatsoever. They're just hurting the innocents. And it's just ridiculous. It's It's like being bullies. It's being entitled to prove a point. It, it just, it, it's not cool. It, it's absolutely not cool to do anything like that. Um, it's, I was going to give an example, like somebody who's mad at, you know, um, I don't know, like some government, like let's say like city of Chicago. So you get your buddies and you go, I'm going to show city of Chicago, you know, how, well, much of a stance I can take on things, how much I can prove a point. So they go. Uh, I'm not hearing him now. All right, guys, real quick. You guys might all hear me still. <laughs> uh, I mean, can you guys, uh, you guys all see me, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Just another day. They're going to blame me. You guys watch. They're going to blame me for this. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's stop that. Get off there. And... All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you have to see me. So, let's see. Who was the person that went down? Me? Or Rob? Or Mark? Let's see. And it still has me in the call, which is really weird. Call dropped. Okay. Yeah, I'm still here, guys. The other guys are dropped off. I don't know if it's because it kicked me out. This X Brun Life, thank you. Trying to see who the. Why won't it let me off here? Stop. Stop calling. Uh, da, da, da. They got hacked. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> oh man, that's really funny. <laughs> Yanni. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It must have been Rob that got knocked off. Because I see everything else going on. It is not letting me leave a call or nothing. Oh boy. I may quit Skype here. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> oh. It is. Quit. I'm gonna quit Skype and come back on here. This is we had a couple more things to get through too. Could have made it all the way through the show. Bring right back up. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Who can I call first? Let's try to bring Rob back in. Hello, Rob. I am not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still we're still live, by the way. I haven't stopped record. I haven't stopped streaming. Yeah. So, what did you get knocked off? I'm assuming that wing probably Got crashed again. again. Well, yeah, let's I'm... try to invite him in in here. See if he gets talked back in here. So we need to start a new recording. Okay. Uh, we will do that here in a second. Let's try to... Can I, can I send it to you on uh, Google Talk instead of Skype? Yeah, you can send it through Skype. That's fine. Okay. Oh, you just can't open links. Oh, boy. What a, what a day. <laughs> Enjoy your <laughs> podcast on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Gunny had no, that. Gunny said they got hacked and made me laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> oh man, it was hilarious. So, oh, was that you? Yeah. All right. Oh, the question is: Is should we stop streaming and start over? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, well, guys. Or... Well. Hello. Oh, here we go. There's Mark. He's back. We're still streaming. <laughs> We're still streaming. <laughs> that was me again. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Dude, I... Yeah. Oh, hold, hold on. Before before we go, guys, we're going to we're going to shut off just so we can get a hard stop for recordings oh. and, and all that stuff. What? Just keep it going. Keep yeah, it going. just keep going. But keep the start video a, going. Oh, okay. Start, start a new audio. Okay. You just have to start a new audio, and he can piece in from where we left off. Okay. Yeah. Did, well, whenever you, did you get the new link. Yep, I'm in there waiting for Mark. Where's so. Where's the link? Yeah, in Skype. Oh, it's in Skype. Yeah. So, guys, because uh, I, I mentioned the um, Gunny Mark, you missed it. Gunny said we got hacked, and that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh, and and the funny thing is, is I I mentioned hacker sticker uh, on their on their laptop, and by the way, here's my laptop. <laughs> you know, so I'm kind of poking at myself, but I don't have a hacker sticker on there. But as a programmer, I got you know all my little programming stuff on there. But I nice. saw somebody I saw somebody saying, "Oh, hacker sticker, that's funny," and you know, so I had to show off show off my stickers. Um, but when we when we come back, maybe we can just go straight into, you know, we'll go back well, into. The... I'm showing us we're recording already okay. on the. I'm recording. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So just go with it, Brian. Yep. Well, <laughs> well Rob was talking about DDoS and, and all yeah. that stuff, and 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 I forget exactly where you were at when we. I don't remember. Got booted either. off. I was um, giving my blocking the highway example of yeah. what a jerk these people are. <laughs> and and the one one thing, Mark, I, I understand like. Because I, I bump into the same things like, oh, what happened to the site? Why did it go down? Why did it do this? Why did it do that? Like, we never have immediate answers, like, right when it happens. But typically what we have after the fact is once everything's going back up, we have, like, an after incident report or, or something that says, okay, here's what happened. Here's what we're doing uh, to hopefully prevent it in the next, you know, in the future. Stuff like that. And when I say I'd like to have them be more transparent because you only had the issue one day, I had it for like, it was like two days, two or three days in a row. And it was like, as soon as I sat down to play a game, nothing worked. And it was just, one day it was only for like 20 minutes. I mean, it was just a short splat and I was just like, oh, okay. And I checked and, and usually... Usually it's not a big deal because they don't flip their site over that they're having issues until it's like an issue. Like if you have a hiccup in a service, they don't update their website to say, oh, there's a brief 10 second hiccup. I mean, it really has to have an issue to be down. Um, And it was down for 20 minutes or something, something like that. It was just something small. And I was just like, okay, you know, it's just, you know, again, another day that I sat down to play a game and there was issues. And this one here was like a four or five hour issue. 
it like went into the night and into the next morning. Um, and there was like still nothing. So my thing was the second time it happened to me, I was like, see another day, more issues, no idea what I'm paying for. That That's how angry it was because there was no mention of what it was the first time. There's no way to find out. It's just like, Oh, it's down. Oh, it's up. Oh, then it's the, down. Then Bron. Oh, it's up. <laughs> the twelve year olds have won. The twelve year olds have won? I pay money and I don't have to know what what's happening with what I'm paying for. All I'm asking for is them to say, Oh, by the way, guys, you know, uh the reason why we were down for, for six hours was because we were getting hit with DDoS attacks. Which is eventually what we found out. It just wasn't from them. It was from media companies. Or Dude, there's so much legal stuff involved. Yeah. If anybody just came out and said it, even though even if the PR message was going to be that eventually, that person right. would get fired. There, there's it's dude the amount like I've had stuff where I couldn't say something right to a customer because of legal things. I had to wait. Mm-hmm. Even though the customer knows and I know, I can't say anything until the legal beagles release the you know approve of what has been stated on the document that then I can hand over to them even though everybody in the room knows what's going on it, it's 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 blame the lawyers right well I <laughs> mean I go. will reserve and, I mean, and what I learned from this was like oh you know if I would have known they would have had DDoS attacks like if they were getting attacked like this I would have never responded the way I responded you know, because really my first day was like, hey, you know, guys, I finally get to sit down and play a game and there's, and there's issues. And they're like, you know, we're experiencing issues and stuff. I'm like, okay, you know, that that's just what it was. It's like, ah, you know, darn it, finally get to sit down. And, and it made me think, like, they've had more problems with Xbox Live with the Xbox One than they have the whole entire life, life of the original Xbox Live uh, with 360. They've had more issues now than they have in eight years. And it's only been two years. But the second time they went down, you know, I'm instant. I'm just like, you know what? Second day in a row, you know, or second time in two days. What am I paying for? What's the problem? What's going on? You know, and I understand that they won't say that. And I'll reserve my, you know, comments a little bit longer in, in light of us talking about this because, you know what? If they can't come out and say what they're doing, then that'll be it. But when it see, gets it can... four days, five I mean, how many more days do I have to wait before eventually? You got to wait till they got the answer. They, I'd rather them oh. focus on the problem and get the problem fixed mm-hmm. instead of playing PR. We all know what's going on. We know what's happening. And Hawk states in the, in the chat, PS4 is as bad, if not worse, mm-hmm. than what the PS3 had as well. You know, so PSN is experiencing it. And, and again, do you get mad at do you get mad at the, the Microsoft or Sony, or do you get mad at you know focus the madness at the people doing the criminal see, act? It's see, let, let me let me put it this way. So let's say you've got a gym membership, all right, mm-hmm. and you're LA Fitness or whatever it is. So you've got a gym membership over there, and then all of a sudden the street in front of the local LA Fitness has construction on it, and it's difficult for you to get into the parking lot. Right. Do you blame LA Fitness for what am I paying my monthly membership for when they're sitting there? They're open. They're, the doors are open. The lights are on. The equipment's there. It's ready to be used, but you just can't get there. Right. Can I mean, is it their fault? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and these and this issues that they're, they're having is not Microsoft's fault. But seeing right. that all they give you is core services down who's whose fault is it whose fault is it when their website says our core service it wasn't just core services but, it was but you gotta, every service was down microsoft has been a lot more open with their community than they ever have been. sure i followed their you Twitter know i mean it, i got you know it i don't fault them for that i was like, i was annoyed i was frustrated that i couldn't play the game you know, and I probably cursed at my box. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know I called it a name or two, but uh, I walk away. I mean, you know, and that's, I'm not mad at the box. That's very big of you I'm, to admit that. I'm not, 
<laughs> I called my Xbox bad names. Yeah. But I'm not it needs mad therapy. at that. I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah. You know, just uh, just go do something else. And that's what I did. It's, I just want to make sure, you know, we, we focus our anger at the right place because yeah. focusing it, I think Microsoft's done a very good job. And we haven't, we have yet, knock on wood, we haven't been down for weeks like PlayStation, PSN experienced uh, a year or two ago where they were out for weeks when they got actually infiltrated. You yeah, know, they actually were hacked. Okay. Was, yeah. So, you know, being out for one day, I don't, you know, well, it is what it is. That's one night I lost. That's it. You know, yeah, it stinks. I, I had time to play, but oh, well, there's other stuff I can do. So I'm just... If it's gonna go in a couple of days, then I'm gonna yeah. Then I you know I I can't imagine not having Xbox Live for a month, dude. I probably would have hurt somebody. Yeah, but but what what <laughs> you want to see? You want to see me rant? But Woo! what what I'm saying though is that nice. if it's down when it's down, like I said, things happen. I'm I'm in this I'm in this. This is what I do lively. You know, like I have websites that go down. I have stuff that goes down. Things that happen. And, like, I know that Xbox Live will never be, you know, they are probably, if you look at their percentage of uptime, it is still probably 99.99999%. Abs I mean, that's probably what their live service is. It's probably up 99%, and that's the truth. But what I'm saying, and, and like, to go, like, with Rob's LA Fitness and there's and there's road construction and stuff, it's like, okay, if you take that and you put a black sheet let's say a very large black tarp over the la fitness over their uh parking lot and over the road that's <laughs> under construction and you just drive through a little hole and then there's just a little bit of an arrow that points this way and it makes it really difficult in there who are you going to blame if the if the big tarp that says la fitness on it <laughs> that's that's what i'm saying it's like you know pull back the sheet a little bit because you blame if, the person that put the sheet there. Yeah. The, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, bro, and focus your anger this, at the guy yeah. at the criminals. Okay, right. You know, I mean, it's uh, hey, Brent. I, know. I don't, I don't know anyway. why, but your little anecdote there sounds like a Wiley e. Coyote Roadrunner right. cartoon okay. for some reason. <laughs> Maybe this is a better one. <laughs> I think it's Xbox, time to move no, on. No, 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 time out. No, 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 time out. He wants to redeem Xbox, himself. No, Xbox Live goes down. Right, and you go to the support site, and it says core service is down. Every other service is down. Is you there a tunnel their, with a train coming through? No, it? you go to their you go to their Twitter, and it says Xbox <laughs> Live is experiencing issues. You know, visit this link to find out what's wrong. Right, and it's pointing you to the same support site. We all know it's support.xbox.com. Right, it's down for eight hours. Right, and then a tweet comes back, and it says. Xbox Live is restored. Okay. Who do you blame? Who do you blame? When it that's all the information you get, who do you blame? Whose fault is it? I don't blame anyone. It? I don't care. You don't you don't it's up. What what does it matter to me? It, it's down. I don't I don't need to know every few minutes what they're doing. Right. I know they're working on it. Their support page acknowledges it. So when what I, what I like is okay, I can't connect. I go to the support page. Oh, good. It's not just me. I do see they're having issues because mm -hmm. they've announced that they're having problems. Right. They're letting everybody know. Yep. If you can't get on, we know we're working on it. True. That's all I need. I mean, I what else? I I'm a nobody. I'm a customer, yeah. but I don't need to know everything that they're doing. I don't need hourly updates from them of, okay, well, we've done this. We've gone through these servers and we've checked these ports and we've, you know, we've rebooted this box. And I just, I don't need to know that. No, what, the typical what, Joe consumer doesn't need to know it. But if it hadn't been for the 12 year old doing a DOS attack on them, this wouldn't be an issue. But we don't know. It's so it's not, it's we not. We don't know. That's, that's what I'm getting but at. But we like, do know because the, because the, the 12 year old is saying, I did it. You know, I mean, that's that's and it's not the first time and they're doing it to other companies. But the, that's that when you're saying when you're saying <laughs> blame the person who's doing it. That's what I'm trying. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Blame the person that's doing it. Everything that Xbox does to tell you when their sites down and stuff like that. I love it. I love that they're transparent to that part. And that's where you came back and I was like, I didn't think about that. 
maybe they're not legally allowed to say the reason why they're having issues. Maybe there's other most, reasons. Most companies will never right. divulge. And, and that's what I'm agreeing to. They're but, covering themselves legally, yeah. Right. And, but, and we don't need to know. We but that's really what don't. you're saying is, Brun, don't, don't get angry. Blame the person who's doing it. And that's what I'm saying is, like, I would blame the person doing it, except for they don't say who's doing it. Everything that they're doing basically just puts it to make it oh. look like it's their fault. And I don't want to be angry at Microsoft for Xbox Live going down or, or this or that. Like it's hard to it's hard to compromise when it's a, it's an hour, eight hours, you know. But when it's a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and all it says is core services down, they don't give you any information, you're gonna be mad at Microsoft. When really all they have to say is, you know what? Here is what's going on, and here's what we're trying to fix. They don't have to do that every hour, every month, you know, or like, you know, something like that. But all I'm saying is that if they don't want to be the one to be blamed, they have to open up to say, here's who you have to go blame. That's all I'm saying. Because it was two, three days that I was impacted, and I was getting a little frustrated. Well, to me, until I read this article and I heard... Uh, Major Nelson on uh, on Unlocked, which was t another day later after that, I sat back and I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't have got upset, you know, at Microsoft for this DDoS attack, but I didn't know that's what it was. Because Here's, all they said was, our entire service okay, is down. <laughs> Here's a, Party Up Live brings up a good, a good point. Not everybody's going to know to go look at support.microsoft or whatever, support.xbox.com. Mm -hmm. Very few people. The people that are in the know or people that follow this like us, mm -hmm. there's going to be so few people that are going to follow that. Most Joe consumer is not. And you can look at that when they – when and as long as the Xbox has been around and gamer score has been around, was it 25,000 gamer score considered an expert? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. so the majority, they're saying, you know, very few people have that much or higher, you know, and I'm, you know, we're all, I think, well, maybe Rob's not, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where Rob's We got a single me out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know, Bron and I have far exceeded that. So it's like we're a top tier and we know we're not. Right. But, you know, it's. I just know in my. It's. Yeah, it would be nice. In a perfect yeah. world, it'd be great if we knew everything and anything that was going on, and you know. But it's just not going to happen. It doesn't happen when your cable goes out. I mean, I guess I look at it that way. If your internet goes out, you call them up, and they're like, "There's an outage in the area." Okay, that's all they ever tell you, and you had to go and make a phone call. Right. It's not like you can go and check. A, obviously, you can't check a web page because the internet's out. But you get on your cell phone and you can't check a status page. You can't, mm -hmm. you know. So I think Microsoft is being very upfront a lot more than any other company out there ever has been or currently is. And I agree with so, that. So <laughs> I mean, and that's that's I'm like so I don't know I don't I, know why I I'm just, defending Microsoft. I know. Well, I just feel bad. Like with with me, <laughs> I know that. If I had to explain to my users or like, I'm not going to make it to where I'm the punching bag. I, I feel, but, and, and that's what I'm saying is I, I think Microsoft makes it to where they're the punching bag because it's like, they don't, they don't, after everything's up and going, they don't come back and say, you know, like post, you know, post issue, like, Hey, this is what happened. You know, like we know you're upset. We know you're angry, but you know this is this is what happened, and and then eventually we found out. But it's just like the whole time, and what I'm saying is like they are giving us information, but they give us enough information just to be mad at them, <laughs> or or most people like you know. And your party at live does have a good point. Like everybody who's just sitting in front of their console and it goes down and they can't connect, can't connect, can't connect. They just throw their controller across the thing and say, "I'm never buying an Xbox again. I'm going to PlayStation." You know, <laughs> no. What what you're gonna what they're gonna do is they're gonna go buy a Nintendo NX right. and play their Xbox One games on the Nintendo. Sure. <laughs> and what's that all about? Tell us How's about the rumors. How's that for a segue? Yeah, so. I'm getting off this topic, bro. Yeah. We're we're moving on. <laughs> so Nintendo so, rumors. Like I know it's an Xbox show, but what's what's the rumors? There was some stuff that came out. Yeah, and you know we yeah we are an, an Xbox show. But this does pertain to Xbox. If you guys hang in there for a moment, 
and again, it's it's also we're all gamers. A lot of people listen to our right. show, including us, the host, have multiple consoles in our homes. Uh, I think all of us have all of them, don't we? Uh, you know, we've got a console from we have a gaming device from probably every all three of the main vendors here. So, um, so this is the Nintendo NX is the rumored next console coming from Nintendo. And I'm going to just, I actually want to read this. It's not going to take me, but maybe a minute or two, but I want to read this article. And again, this is in the rumor category, but I thought this was interesting. And I, I thought this could, we maybe talk about this. So I'm going to read the article. Here we go. Let's give okay. some backstory on the source of this leak. The, the info comes from Gino, who was who has quite a history with rumors. More importantly, he has a history of being correct on his rumored information. Here's the rumors that Gino has nailed in the past. Nintendo would release a Pokemon game. Well, you know what? I don't need to read all this. Right. Uh, he's got some stuff here to, to signify that he is he's this guy has rumored some stuff before it has come true. Um, so his pedigree speaks for itself. And today let he's let loose with a bunch of rumored info on the NX. You can decide how to take the details, but they are certainly interesting nonetheless. So the first one has a wireless HDMI dongle that attaches flush to the back of the device. Next one is you can pull it out and insert it into any display with a normal size HDMI output. Uh, device uses an evolved version of the Wii U's streaming tech to display in HD on the TV screen. Has analog controls for movement. Or analog controls for movement have small motors in them for full haptic feedback. Uh, haptic example: If you can, if you control a character and hit a wall, the sticks move away from the wall to simulate hitting it. Bluetooth sync with tons of devices, including smartphones and tablets. You can answer phone calls and display text messages from your phone onto NX screens. It comes closest in terms of power to the Xbox One. All tech uses the exact same hardware layout as the PS4 and the Xbox One. Now, here's the big point that I'm going to come back. I want to read this and we'll come back to this. Any game that can run on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One can easily run on the NX with near zero modifications. So that doesn't make sense. Log that. Yeah, we're going to come back to that. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is uh, the next one. This is even more true if the game runs on Android OS or Unreal Engine 4. Uh, one third-party dev says it's the easiest device we've ever developed for. You just take your code, compile it, and it works. Uh, let's see. I'm going to maybe skip a few of these. Uh, it'll take multiplayer AR and the street pass concept to a whole new level. Um, it's been described it visually and functionally as a Samsung and the Nintendo 2DS had a baby. <laughs> I don't even know what that would be like. Um, operating system named Nintendo OS very powerful and has so many modern features of mobile operating systems. Um, Nintendo is being very careful uh, in showing it off for the fear that it would be mistaken as running Android. Very strong networking functions as it ties into multiple devices and services, and this allows for very competent and pervasive ecosystem. So, anyways, I want to go back to any game that can run on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One can easily run on the NX with near zero modifications. I do not understand that. That doesn't make any sense to me unless they had a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One emulator on their system somehow. Because... Yes, just because the architecture or the hardware is the same, it's still a different OS that you're writing these games to. So, what? How do you guys think that that could be true? Again, uh, this is all rumored. Yeah. So the, it all depends, I think, on how uh, these are all bullet points. Everybody that that's in an article that were taken from this guy. And and I guess it really depends on how you read it and how you take it, because, like, I take this as any game that is currently developed on uh, Xbox One or PlayStation 4 can be taken, compiled for Nintendo OS, and the game can run on there. So Madden, which is, you know, go back a 
go back to the previous uh, thing of Wii, Xbox 360, and PS3. PS3 and Xbox One, different architectures. So you had to build the game for Xbox 360. You had to build the game for PlayStation uh, 4. And these games are obviously higher in power. They were, they were, you know, they could do a lot more. And then to port it to the Wii was like, you had to cut, cut a bunch of stuff out. You had to do motion controls. You had to do this. You had to do this. You had to do this. Oh, still doesn't run on the Wii, so we just don't release it. This okay. one here is more of any game because of the power and, and the complexity and, and stuff like that. Any game that you can actually run or develop or code on these other two consoles, you can also put on our console without having to do anything special. So you don't have to dumb down the graphics. You don't have to dumb down the controls. You don't have to do this. We are portable. Like, well, not portable, like take somewhere, but you can port your game to us. Easy peasy. Very no, easy. no special, okay. no special things to do. Now that makes sense. And right. I can understand yeah, that. And that's a, that, that, thank you. Yep. That perfectly makes sense to me now than, uh, using the same tech. So yeah, PS3 and the 360, the PS3 had the cell processor. So right. it was an x86 architecture, which the 360 was. Now the Xbox One is and the PS4 is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you should be able to essentially take Uncharted, the new Uncharted and port it over to Xbox One very easily, you know, with a few minor tweaks to it. So I guess that's right. what they're saying now. The Nintendo is in the same league as these other guys. So when these developers are making um assassin's creed the next assassin's yeah. creed game it can go on all three systems instead of just the sony and microsoft system yeah destiny division like these big games that are they're like oh you need an xbox one to run or oh you need a ps4 right. to run well they'd be like well yeah you you guys can when we release the nx we guys port that to us because all you have to do is compile the code and you're you're good well, it's They're about be... time they they got it on board exactly because for how many generations have it's been you buy a nintendo game to play nintendo any other game you buy it on a different system yep oh yeah, yeah. It, i mean they've got to be losing out like i mean not having these games on their systems got to be hurting them it's like all these games now are made for xbox or playstation and that's it yeah, the so. Wii they did fine. The Wii U they really messed up on the Wii U. They they should have made something that was comparable to yeah, but the Wii. They did okay, but I mean, really, what did they have for games? Uh, not a not a lot well, of yeah. the party did. It was a lot of garbage stuff. Right. And it was it was all for ooh. It was the first with motion controls. So they they sold a bajillion of those things, and everybody played Wii bowling. Yeah, that's it. You know, right. <laughs> it, it was they sold a lot of hardware. But not a lot of people saw a lot of games sold for the systems because it was just a bunch of garbage. And well, it was and stuff that was made for the motion controls, so it didn't translate to the other two consoles. And then the games that the hardcore people want, they didn't even give them. <laughs> you know? And plus the, the Wii went to a lot of like grandparents' houses and yeah. senior centers and <laughs> such, so it wasn't really even traditional gamers at bottom the wii u is a better example because they had like games that they were going to port to the wii u and most of the third-party companies like canceled them they're just like that eh, we're not doing that now just because it's not worth doing right. and and this one here that i think they're trying to make developers and 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 publishers like take a sigh of relief like hey this thing isn't going to be so crazy that we're going to have to have a whole team for it just for those guys, and we're just not going to build anything for it. Um, I think it's a bullet point to help get back third-party support, um, which is what they need to do. Because without third-party support in this console, they're done. They might as well just be software at that point, make games for PlayStation and Xbox. It does look interesting. I'm interested to see. I, I really, I, I think the coolest part on there that I was reading was the HDMI. It's like they're going to have wireless HDMI. The way I read that. So they're going to have a wireless HDMI dongle that attaches flush to the back of the device. And then whenever you want, you just unplug it and put it into any TV or anything that you want to play your console on. It almost, you know what? That makes it sound like this thing is going to be a handheld. Well, that's slash... the thing. It said it looked like a the Samsung slash 
2DS had a baby. Oh. So to me, that makes it sound like a, it, a, a portable, as in like a 3DS, like the next, almost like, okay, it's going to be a portable device, but it's also something you can put this dongle in and hook it up to your TV and use a controller. And, you know, it, it could very be well like a hybrid of a home console and a portable. It's going to be all in one. Yeah, multiple Bluetooth devices. So maybe a PlayStation 4 controller can hook up to it. Yeah. That'll be interesting. If they can get a handheld that's that's like that small that you can take on the play Halo on 5 the road with, with PlayStation 4 controller on your Nintendo NX. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think those the games that are made for PlayStation and, and Xbox are not going to be the exclusive <laughs> ones. <laughs> but good saying. try. I like the way I'm you're thinking. <laughs> like the way you're thinking. <laughs> so That'd be interesting, though, because if they can make something like that that's that powerful, you know, just as powerful as the Xbox One that can play all those games, um, then, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty neat. So, so We'll right. probably hear a lot about this at E3, would be my guess, because this is due out here soon, isn't it? We don't know. So I don't think there's yeah. been a release date. And so. E3's only, like, what, three... June, June, early four June. months away, yep. three and a half months or so. Yeah. All right. So, cool. All right, all right. Uh, community time. We'll we'll get through this real quick because community's really, really light this week. Uh, first thing, holy cow! Hawk wants a twenty ounce cup, mug, whatever. Can we <laughs> can we find out of cafepress.com I, slash I look into <laughs> this Xbox tonight. Live has a twenty ounce version. And when we get it, can we please throw it at him through the computer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go, Hawk. We're checking for you. <laughs> I'm so, I keep Hawks putting in there. How come I can't get a 20 ounce hole? Holy cow, will you let me look for you? <laughs> so we're checking for you, man. <laughs> um, never know if they've put one in and we just haven't added it to our store. So we'll, we'll look at that for you. But it's cafepress.com slash this Xbox Life for for. Uh, the gear for the community. Um, you can leave voicemails and emails at thisxboxlife.com as long as we're not hacked. Um, if the site goes down, we'll make sure not to tell you why. Um, <laughs> uh, if you go to the site, click voicemail on the right-hand side, follow the prompts. Um, there's a form to leave us a message. Or if it's easier for you, just open up your email client that you use contact at thisxboxlife.com. We'll also send an email directly to us and we will read it or play them on the show. Uh, Twitter.com slash this Xbox life for tw uh, to follow us on Twitter or to send us messages. And our big thing is our Facebook uh, Facebook group. So we're facebook.com slash groups slash this Xbox life. Uh, closed group, but all we do is kind of vet your account a little bit and then uh, we let you in. So, but that's it. No, no big messages or anything. Uh, FNL, um, Friday Night Life, we had it. Um, I know we talked really long about I couldn't let the topic go. Um, but FNL was a blast this weekend, or this Friday. I had so much fun. Um, we had, I think there was a total of nine or ten of us because we had to move a couple people, a couple people left, a couple people filled their spot. But we played Rocket League. We did uh, four on four randoms, private matches, and it was just a good time. We had some blowouts. We had some close games. We had overtimes. We had everybody by the end was flying through the air. We had to almost ban Serial from playing because he kept doing everything. And <laughs> but I had a blast. I don't know, Mark, how much fun you had, but it was definitely. A good time so uh, it was a good time and uh we streamed it uh we streamed it on on our channel you can actually go watch that replay um or go to our uh youtube channel where we put all of our shows and uh watch it there i you know divisions coming in a couple weeks i know that'll probably be f uh, friday night life in a in a couple weeks i'm all for doing rocket league again this friday unless when we get people on there, if people are getting bored or whatever, I'm willing to change games if if people want to. It's really up to you guys. So let's say 
Start with well, Rocket League. What, this Friday? Yeah. Okay, I will not be available this Friday night. Okay. I'll be uh, there. I will be the following Friday, and it'll be The Division, yes. baby. Yeah, The Division in two <laughs> weeks. Let's do. Let's start with Rocket League. We'll we'll see who we can compile in the, uh, pile in the group. Uh, what it is is at 9 o'clock, I start an open party, and just you guys just come on in. Just come in. If you can't get in, send me a message uh, through Xbox, and uh, I'll see if there's just too many people there because even if you don't have Rocket League and you want to jump in and, and hang out for a little bit, do that. It's fine with me. The Xbox party, 12 people. Um, and we'll go from there. If you're not on my friends list and you can't join me, send me a message because this thing doesn't do friends requests anymore. It's like you follow me, I have to follow you back. So, But I do accept messages from anybody, so just let me know. Um, but yeah, let's let's do it again. That'll be fun. All right. I All right. Think Retail release is time. Yep, go for it. All right, so for Xbox One this coming week, we have Alekine's Gun. This is a like a third-person like World War II style shooter game and who knows what else. Uh, Mortal Kombat XL, or if you like Roman numerals, it's Mortal Kombat 40. Seems like it at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, screen Cheat also. Then for the Xbox 360, uh, it doesn't look like we have anything. Nope. Uh, at least this coming week. Not till June. Yeah, Games with Gold switches it up on Tuesday. We have Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment for the Xbox One. Also, Sticks, uh, Master of Shadows carries over from February. Xbox 360 has, uh, what was it, Supreme Commander 2. That one comes out uh, for Xbox 360, and this is supposedly going to be backwards compatible. Uh, all these are supposedly backwards compatible, so uh, make sure to grab them uh, if you have an Xbox One, for sure. Uh, also, if you're going to be making any purchase on, X- on Xbox-related or anything else, uh, use our Amazon link, uh, our Amazon affiliate link. If you purchase through Amazon, to get to that, just go to thisxboxlife.com, click on the Amazon link each and every time that you make a purchase on Amazon to help support the show. Uh, doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just uh, but they give us a little finder's fee for sending you their way. And then also, if you're on iTunes, please make sure to uh, find us on there. Uh, please give us a review with five stars, hopefully. Uh, the more five-star reviews that we get, uh, that bumps us up in the ratings over there, and it helps us become a featured podcast. So that is it for this episode, episode 378. And we are almost out of time, right? We're going to hit the wall, so we better get out quick. Yep, we got to go. Yes. And just a quick, 15 ounces is the largest size on the mugs. So you just got to get 11 ounce and 15 ounce. So he's got to buy two of them. Two 15s. (laughs) 30 is better than 20. That's right. Well, that's all for this week. We'll be back uh, next week. So catch everybody on Friday for FNL. So Uh, Brun, BJ, Swick, 33. This is Rob, also known as Pre-Star. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Mark, a.k.a. Wingman709, taking off.